Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation sample paper discussion. We are getting started with the set B of the sample papers and looking forward to understand the similar way how we have covered the set A and trying to understand that what exactly could be the possible ways the questions can be asked to you and how to basically look forward to the solutions of them. And these sample papers can be very helpful to boost up your confidence what you have gained by going through the tutorials and now it's time for us to tackle the questions and get that understanding that how to solve the problems during the examination with minimum effort. So getting started with the chapter one once again and looking at the first question of this chapter which is which of the following provides the definition of the term test cases. Now again, this is a very pretty, uh, very typical uh, question which can be asked to you that is defining a terminology, but the definition will not be so straightforward and they will be talking about different options what you may be confused with. Now let's look at these options here. If you say option A, it is a subset of the value domain of a variable within a component or system in which all values are expected to be treated the same based on the specification. First of all, this typical statement does not make any sense in terms of a tester's understanding. So you should be immediately opting out such statement. Because if they're talking about a value domain of variable within a component, this is too technical. And I think we have never dealt with any such technical uh, definitions or terminologies so far in our entire syllabus. Moreover, this is something related for a developer, but not a tester. So you should not be looking forward to any such statements to be confusing yourself or wasting a lot of time. Look at the option B, a set of preconditions, inputs, actions, expected results, and post conditions developed based on a test condition. I think this makes pretty much more sense when it comes to the test cases as they contain all these information which is specified here and a test case is always written for a particular test condition, right? You don't write directly requirement into test cases. You start with preparing test condition and then converting into the test cases. C, work products produced during the test process for use in planning, designing, executing, evaluating and reporting on testing. I think, yes, this can be one of the work products which is used in executions, right? But not used for planning, not used for evaluating and reporting and blah, 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 right? It is just created under designing phase and used for execution. And that too not used. It is basically the main content during the execution phase. Coming to the D, a source to determine an expected result to compare with the actual of the system and the test. Now that's something which is crucial to be understood, but yes, this is definition of a test oracle, which you generally use as short notes to compare the expected with the actual to come to a conclusion, but not exactly a definition to the entire test case, which is one of the best answer here. We already have one, right? So the right answer here is B, a set of preconditions, inputs, actions, expected results, and post conditions developed based on test conditions. Let's look at the question number two, which is again a very straightforward question from what is testing? Which of the following is a typical objective of testing? Now, objective of testing are again very straightforward, so they cannot trick you around, but yes, their options can be slightly confusing. So if you look at the option A, to find defects and failures, of course, that's the responsibility, or I can say the core responsibility of a tester to conduct as many failures as possible so that defects can be identified and rectified. B, to validate the project plan, which works as required. I think we are not one among them who should be validating or uh, looking forward to verify the project plan. And this is more of a project management level thing and a tester or test manager is not the one which validates the uh, project plan. It could be test plan to a certain extent, but not fully, but yet project plan is not something in our scope. C, ensuring of complete testing. Yeah, that sounds really interesting, which can be a confusion for you during the uh, examination. But if you really understand this, complete testing is straightforward contradicting with principle number two, which is exhaustive testing is impossible because exhaustive testing is something which can say that you have done complete testing and 
on the principle, we say that this is impossible to be conducted, right? So we cannot say testing has enough the objective that you can do complete testing. Coming to D, comparing actual results with expected result. I think that's one of the activity of uh, the test execution phase, but not an overall objective altogether. So it is one of the activity which we generally perform as a part of the test execution while running the test cases, but it's not a major objective throughout the entire testing process, which should not be considered as the right answer as well. So if you see, this is how you should be justifying your options to yourself and coming up to the conclusion that the right answer here is A, to find defects and failures, which is to conduct as many failures as possible so that defects can be identified. Looking forward to the next question, which says, uh, which of the following is an example of a failure in car cruise control system? Now this question is coming from the definition and differences between error, defect, and failure. So you should recognize that definition failure is an approach uh, to find, identify that when your test case actually fails in a real time execution. So the option here is A, the developer of the system forgot to rename a variable after a cut and paste operation. I think this is more of like the error which you are being told that because of this, your failure happened. So it's not telling me a failure which is visible to a tester or visible to a user in a real time uh, environment or production. So this is something which is kind of an error, which is telling me the root cause of the failure. Look at B, unnecessary code that sounds an alarm when reversing was included in the system. This is again, unnecessary code is my error, which is telling me the failure, which is reversing was included in the system, right? So still, this is not a complete failure. This is an error, which is being declared to you. C, the system stops maintaining a set speed when the radio volume is increased or decreased. Now this is something which is visible to a user when they perform while driving the car. Unnecessary code is a defect, but kind of you know, giving you the root cause behind it. The A option is also giving you a root cause, but here C is talking about a user experience while, while he or she is working on the car while driving it. D. The design specification for the system wrongly states the speed, which is again telling me the root cause that this is something which is designed, which has resulted into showcasing a wrong speed reading, all right? So that's again, which is giving you a very pretty much clarity that when they ask you about the failures, try to differentiate what is that which is visible to a user because failures are something which are visible only to a user, not to the uh, developer something, right? So user can only see the failures, not the reason behind them. So the right answer here is C, the system stops maintaining a set speed when the radio volume is increased or decreased. Let's look at one more question from this particular session and the question number four, which of the following is defect rather than a root cause? Again, similar thing, but instead of talking about the failure, we're talking about the problem rather than just the scenario failure and uh, on a fitness tracker system. Option A, because the author of the requirement was unfamiliar with the domain of the fitness training, he therefore wrongly assumed that the user wanted heartbeats in beats per hour. I think that's again something which is uh, straightforward telling you that we got to the root cause and this is not a defect. This is like justifying why exactly the defect happened. B, a tester of the smartphone interface had not been trained in state transition testing, so missed a major defect. Again, we are talking about the root cause that why exactly you missed the defect? Well, the reason was you were not trained on one of the test techniques, which was important at that time. C, an incorrect configuration variable implemented for GPS function could cause location problem during daylight saving times. Now here in this statement, it also pretty much looks the similar, but if you understand, it is telling could cause, where we are predicting, we are anticipating that if in case we go wrong with the con you know, correct configurations, it may cause a problem. So this is something which is looking like a defect rather than a root cause. Here we are not justifying to you that why the problem happened. We're just telling you that a problem can happen and we're looking forward to it as a defect. D, 
Because the designer had never worked on the variable devices before, she asked designer of the user interface, therefore misunderstood the effects of reflecting sunlight. Pretty much the root cause being told to you that why she went wrong. So being again very straightforward, you need to just separate out the ones which are talking about the root cause and the one which is talking about a problem. And the problem becomes your defect and rest all are filtered out. So the right option here is C, an incorrect configuration variable implemented for the GPS functions could cause problems during daylight saving times is a defect rather than a root cause. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with more questions on this and discussing on the same. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.